Hello, this is Dan, the Furniture Repairman. Today we're going to show you how to fix scratches in your furniture and how to do it using a crayon, your driver's license, and a cigarette lighter. So here's what we use in the trades. They're called fill sticks, but they're basically fancy crayons. You can order these online. We're going to put the link below, or you can sneak in your kid's room and steal something out of their box of Crayolas. Now this is an antique piece we're working on, and you can see the top left there is where the hinge is going to go on. We're not at there yet, but we're going to work on this scratch. Now I'm heating up the crayon, and I'm just rubbing a little bit of wax in. Now I'm not rubbing it in equally all the way over. I'm skipping areas, and the reason why is I want this to have a very organic feel. Now if I put the color in equally all the way across, I'm just going to end up with a line that's a different color. What I want to do is I want to make it look like wood. So I want it to have darks and lights, and I want some color movement there. Now I'm going to go from that color, and I'm going to add a little bit more heat to it, and then I'm going to jump over, I think, to a red color after this. Let's see what I pick up. I can't quite remember. I was breathing in a lot of lacquer that day. There it is. That's the red color. So sometimes I... I Take the mask off a little too soon when I'm spraying, and I can't quite remember what was happening earlier. So here comes the red color. You see I'm filling in in between my lines. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have color movement. I'm going to have browns and spots. I'm going to have reds and spots. And I'm moving this around, and I'm going to push it around sometimes on top of the brown I just pushed in, and sometimes between the brown I just pushed in. So I want to blend with the brown, and then I want to be separate from the brown. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back with a plastic card. I think this is like a throwaway grocery store card, but for years I just used my driver's license. And then one day I got pulled over and I took my license out and gave it to the cop and it was all full of wax. And uh, he gave me a ticket just because my driver's license was so messy. So after that, I started using other things. Now, this is a scotch bright. Now, this is a white scotch bright from 3M. Uh, you can use the green scotch scotch bright that you use to clean your dishes. Just use a new one. So we're using it just to take off the excess wax in the area, and we're going to remove it down, and we're going to start seeing how well we blend everything in. And I'm going to take my finger and pull off some extra wax that's in the area, and then I believe after this I'm going to come back with some sandpaper. So here's the sandpaper, but what I'm using is the back side. I'm not using the rust side, I'm using the paper side. And we're going to heat up this wax by rubbing it with the sandpaper, creating friction. And it's going to make it go into that groove a little better. And I'm going to start to see how my color looks. If my color makes sense, if I need to add in another color, and even if I have everything all the way filled in. Now I can also, like you see here, use my fingers to clean the wax and move it around and I'm taking a good look and there we are so we are looking better but we're not all the way there so we're gonna of course go back and do a little bit more work now a lot of times it depends on the angle you're looking at the way the color looks and then if you're taking pictures of it the color is always going to look a little bit off just because of the way the camera photographs it. So I work on the piece in the light where it will be in real life, if possible. Now this is in my shop, so I have no idea where it's going to be in real life. So I tend to have to make it try to look as best I can for the light I have. And when it gets delivered, usually we're in good shape. So here's a little bit of a darker color. And you can see the cigarette lighter going on. And I've already heard tremendous negative reviews about me using a cigarette lighter in my shop. And, oh my God, I'm going to blow the place up and all these terrible things are going to happen. But, um, you know, sometimes you just got to get things done. So now here I come back, the back of the sandpaper, and I'm going to burn this in. I'm gonna really going to create friction. I'm going to rub this real hard, and you're going to see color coming off on the back of the sandpaper as I rub it off. Now, it's doing two things. It's taking the excess wax off, and it's blending and pushing those three different colors. Now, we have three different colors on there now. So it's, it's making them blend in. We're moving them around a little bit, and we're blending them in, and we're going to end up with more of a natural wood look. So there we go. 
little more sandpaper back, or you could use a uh, paper grocery bag, piece of craft paper, anything with a little bit of roughness on the back of it. And I'm moving it around with my finger. There you go. And you can see actually the way you can push the wax and just pull it right out of the way. Now, I'm looking at it, and I'm probably saying I need a little different color on top of that to make this work. So let's see where I go to next. Okay, this is a close-up of the area from the other side, just a little different angle. We are filled in better, but we can need to fill in a little bit more in this area. And then we also have to put a little bit of a coat of a varnish on it. So we're coming with another color. We're gonna heat it up and we're gonna work on this area right here. And because it's a, a smaller scratch, we're gonna go with the line rather than across the line and just try to fill in that area. And I'm gonna keep heating up this wax because I want it to flow in now. It's, it's not gonna grab in there so easily because it's not such a, a huge spot. And then right here in this corner, I have a bunch of spots, and then I'm just going right along that line, adding in some color. Now, it's not going to color it out all the way, because the wax has a little bit of transparency to it. Now, the reason why I use a plastic card here is that it's not going to scratch the varnish, okay? It's just very, it's a very simple way to remove a bunch of wax at once without damaging the varnish on there, putting any scratches on there, okay? You could use the Scotch-Brite uh, to remove all the wax, but I feel that it tends to take too much wax out of the scratch itself because it tends to form itself to the scratch and then you end up with the scratch being back there because the scotch bright takes it out so i kind of use a combination of both of them the plastic card and the scotch bright so here we go and now i use my fingers for a lot of it too just pulling on the wax moving it off scraping it off and now i'm going to come with the scotch bright and I'm going to clean off that extra wax that's up in the edges. Now, I'm not pushing down right on my spot. I'm kind of pushing down above and below as I get there. And I'm going to keep blending it in. Now, I'm going to take the camera. I'm going to move it to the other angle. And we're going to take a good look at how it all is. Now, remember a couple things. One is we're at this, taking a look at this very closely. And nobody's going to be looking at your furniture from six inches away or three inches away, whatever my ca camera angle is. Another thing is I'm under very, very bright lights here. So I have tremendous lighting in my stop shop. And the reason is so I could see things. And if they look good under this light, then they will look just fine in someone's home. So I'm happy with the way this is looking right now. And I'm going to add on a coat of varnish. Now what I'm spraying on is a coat of sealer, sanding sealer, because I'm still working on this piece. I have to work on the top. I have to add some more varnish to the legs. But if you're fixing a piece in your home, you probably can just leave it with the wax and it'll be just fine. Or if you want to seal it, I would recommend maybe uh, some spray on shellac. Clean the area a little bit first and then spray it on there. And then if that's too shiny, after it dries, just take that green scotch, scotch bright that you use to uh, wash the lasagna pan and then uh, rub it on there and it'll dull it down a little bit. Uh, shellac tends to stick to everything, so it's a very good product to use if you're not too sure what your piece is covered with. Thanks so much for watching. This is Dan the Furniture Repairman. Again, playing with fire in his shop like a crazy person. I'm sure it's going to annoy a lot of people. Remember, every time we repair something, we keep it out of the landfill. And we also keep, down, keep from cutting down trees to make new ones. It's just such a good thing to take an old piece of furniture and restore it. Not only that, but some of the wood in these pieces is never being found again. It's old growth timber. It has a beauty to it that can't be made anymore. So take a good look at something before you toss it out. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you have any comments, put them below. Want to yell at me for using the cigarette lighter? Go right ahead. Uh, call me a shoemaker. None of it matters. If you have any videos you think you want to see, put them down there. I'll see if I can make one for you. Thank you all so much for watching.